Marzipan isn't just delicious confection. It's the code name for Apple's multi-year project to bring UIKit apps to macOS. In other words, apps made in the newfangled iPad way rather than traditional app kit way for the Mac. We saw the awkward early stages last year at WWDC 2018 with the release of Apple's first iPad app ports, News, Home, Voice Recorder, and Stocks from Mojave. And while they're not good or consistent or inspiring or good, at least not yet, they're most definitely here, and that's something. Apple said stage two begins this year at WWDC 2019 when developers get their chance to create and port UIKit apps to the Mac. Sure, that includes huge players like Netflix and Twitter, but it could also include iOS apps that previously made no economic sense to redo for the Mac, like Drafts and Overcast. Most recently, Mark Gurman rumored for Bloomberg that the future stages include a way to bring iPhone apps, the ones without existing iPad interfaces, over as well, and eventually a unified app store and universal binaries across iPhone, iPad, and Mac, and Apple's existing adjunct platforms like Watch, TV, and maybe even CarPlay. But it's a long, long road from here to there, and I'm not a developer, so I reached out to one of the smartest, most industrious, most keyed-in developers I know to help me suss all of this out. I'm Rene Ritchie, and this is Vector. Guy Rambo, how are you, sir? I'm doing great, Rene. How are you? Good. So if you had to define Marzipan as it exists today, like based on what we've seen since WWDC 2018 and the apps that shipped as part of Mojave, what would you say about it? I think the best way to describe it is work in progress. It's definitely not something that's ready quite yet. It's a... Uh, an experiment of sorts. There's almost two camps already. There are people who are all in on the iPad Pro and think this will help drive macOS to a more iOS for iPad style future. And then you have people who have been with the Mac since before the Mac was doomed and just see this as not being Mac, like not embracing the menu bar, not embracing windowing, not embracing keyboard conventions. Is there a middle ground or is one group totally right and the other group totally wrong? I believe in the middle ground. I think uh, that the iPad uh, side of, of things is a little bit uh, weird on the Mac. Like you, the UI is a little bit weird because we're not used to stuff like that on, on the Mac. I think the, the biggest example is the Home app, which looks kind of alien on the Mac. And they're inconsistent between one and the other in what they implement and what they don't. Yeah, I think that's a, a function of the state of the project when these apps were adapted and when uh, Mojave shipped. So uh, I really feel like uh, in uh, June when Apple announces the actual SDK for us, we're going to see new features and those may or may not be tied to the rumored new features for iPads, which uh, we've uh, been hearing about, like multiple tabs in a single app and maybe multiple windows or something uh, more t towards that direction. I feel like if we could have multiple windows in these marzipan apps, it would like uh, reduce the amount of complaints by like 50% or something. <laughs> So yeah, uh, Apple already pre-announced that this year, uh, presumably, w, almost certainly at WWDC 2019, they're going to release the SDK. What are you hoping that SDK would be like? How would it best serve your needs? I think this year they're probably going for ease of uh, portability of apps. Uh, I really feel like they, they want to make sure they get as many developers on board as they can with minimal effort, so let's say a, a checkbox in Xcode that allows your uh, iPad app to run on the Flip Mac. Flip a bit. Uh, it's prob <laughs> probably not going to be that easy, but uh, they, they are probably trying to get it as close as possible to that and still give a decent user experience. And I, I think then they're going to add stuff on top of that. Like you can adopt the touch bar if you want to. You can adopt the menu bar and do stuff with the, the window toolbar. I, I really feel like you are going to be able to just throw your app over the wall uh, into Mac land. And if you want to go a little bit further, you're going to be able to uh, make it even better. Now, do you think there's a legitimate case for people who are worried that this is the, like the further iOSification of the Mac, or is it going to be more like when the classic OS gave way to OS 10? Like people are always afraid of the future, but eventually the future brings us all forward. 
people don't like change no. uh, and uh, th- yeah and I, I feel like many uh, people who love the Mac and, and I am one of them yeah. they are worried that the uh, iOSification of, of the Mac is going to take stuff away from them uh, and I really don't see it like that I see it as adding more stuff to the Mac uh, and not as taking stuff away uh, you're going to be able to have apps on the Mac you haven't been able to have before and uh, e- these apps are probably not going to be uh, at least I don't think so that they are going to be uh, super advanced productivity apps or video editing apps or like uh, Pixelmator types of type of apps those are going to be I think more content consumption apps, fun apps, entertainment apps, maybe some games. Like pop apps, popular apps. Yeah, imagine like Netflix, the maybe the YouTube app. Those would be great on the Mac as is. I really feel like this is a good thing for the Mac uh, and I don't feel like it's going to take stuff away. Like the really good Mac OS app shops are not going to stop doing native app kits, pro apps just because they now can Part iOS apps more easily. A lot of people are excited to get apps like Drafts and Overcasts onto the Mac, apps that never made economic sense to bring over before. But some people also are hoping this will be a way to bring Mac apps, uh, you know, their favorite Mac apps to iOS, including things like Final Cut and, and Xcode. Do you think it's a two way street or is Apple aiming it in one direction? That's a common misconception, uh, which is understandable, but uh, there's n- absolutely uh, no provision in this uh, whole Marzipan thing to bring uh, Mac apps to iOS. That's a, that's completely impossible. The, it has nothing to do with that. It's completely a one-way street from iOS to the Mac. And unfortunately, if you've been looking for Sketch for iOS, you're going to have to wait Keep a little looking. bit longer, I guess. Yeah. All right. So uh, I guess last big question then is Mark Gurman on Bloomberg said that this is a multi-stage project that we got, you know, the Apple preview last year. We're getting developers this year, but there's going to be a second stage where Apple makes it easier to bring iPhone apps that don't already have iPad interfaces to the Mac. And then eventually they'll have a unified app store and universal iPhone, iPad, Mac apps. What do you think about that as sort of like the further future of of marzipan i think it's the natural direction that this would go towards especially if we, we consider the uh, imminent change of the the max to arm processors so if you already have a way to uh, make the same app run on both ipad iphone and the mac and you transition the mac to the same architecture as ios it's a natural fit to just like, let's use the same binary everywhere and have a, a unified app store. So, I mean, famously or infamously, if you prefer, the iOS currently has no concept of a pointer or a trackpad beyond just uh, text entry. And macOS has no concept of touch interface. If there's going to be universal binaries, is that something Apple's going to have to solve first? Or is that just something they can handle in the abstraction layers? They've had to solve it already for Marzipan. Uh, Well, first they had to make it work for the iOS simulator. Uh, For people who don't know, when you're an iOS developer, you can develop against a simulated iOS device, uh, which is not an emulation, it's a simulation. So it runs your iOS app built for uh, the Intel processor inside a little window on your Mac. And that works with touch inputs that's simulated through a mouse pointer. Uh, so what they have they had to do with Marzipan was actually make these uh, touch inputs be more like uh, pointer inputs and make like the scrolling work without you having to like t- t- click and drag on the screen to to scroll. So uh, they've done most of the work already. Uh, we've been looking. Uh, people have been following the uh, WebKit's code base and noticed that they have been doing some work there to support mouse pointers on iOS. And WebKit is the open source version of Safari, right? The foundations? Exactly. So it's the the thing that renders the websites on the screen. And that's been having some work done to it to support mouse pointers on iOS, which can be just a thing for Marzipan, or it could be like something for maybe mouse support on iPad or who knows. All the capacitive fingers uh, crossed. 
Uh, so I guess I lied before. Real last question is when people heard about iPhone apps on the Mac, they started to imagine a bunch of little handy widgets just all over their screen for their favorite iPhone apps. Do you think that's more likely or do you think Apple has other or at least further plans for iPhone apps on, on Mac? I think initially it, it can be that, uh, but I, I feel like Apple is really going to start pushing developers towards this universal app uh, solution. And maybe the decision to start with iPad apps is in uh, a big part to actually push developers who are currently developing iPhone-only apps to do that extra work to support iPad, which now becomes more interesting because if you do the extra work to support iPad, you're going to be doing the extra work at the same time to support the Mac. So it's a larger market you can target. And I think developers will be really interested in that. So I've got it, Guy. Because of size classes and all the work that Apple's done, you'll have a phone that you can unfold into a tablet, and it'll just change the interface. And then you unfold it a second time into a keyboard and screen, and it just runs like a Mac. And that's that's the end game here. That would be great. That, that's my dream device right there. <laughs> All right, Guy. So if people want to know, if people want to find you on the internet, where can they go? You can read my articles on 9to5Mac, and you can also follow me on Twitter, where I am at underline inside. And you have some phenomenal apps as well that, you know, things that make Animoji and AirPods better. And I'll link to those in the description. Awesome. All right. Thanks so much, Guy. Thank you. So yeah, call me cautiously optimistic. I know some of you will think this is yet another great doom and gloom for the Mac with all the UI kitties running rampant across the platform. But again, that's probably what classic Mac OSers thought about the next step OS X upstarts back in the day. Either way, I'd argue there's never been a better time to learn to code for Apple's platforms. And if you want to, but aren't sure how to begin, check out Skillshare. Skillshare is an online video learning experience with over 20,000 classes in design, photography, technology, video, and yeah, coding. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to all of the high quality classes so you can learn a whole new career or just expand the career you already love. Just visit the link in the description and the first 500 of you get two months of unlimited access to 20,000 classes for free. Act now and start learning today. Thanks Skillshare and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. So Marzipan, UI kit iOS apps on the Mac. You heard our thoughts, now I wanna hear yours. Hit like, hit subscribe, it really helps out the channel. And then hit up the comments below and fill them to the brim. And thank you so much for watching.